Maskless former President Obama was spotted speaking to mask construction workers outside the construction of property in Hawaii linked to the former president. The construction has been raked with controversy. ProPublica reported back in 2020 that Honolulu's Department of Planning and Permitting has granted the developers of the luxury oceanfront estate a major exemption from environmental laws designed to protect Hawaii's beaches. The permit clears the way for a multi-million dollar renovation of a century-old seawall that property owners say is needed to protect the sprawling compound they are building in eastern Oahu. And projects like these are typically banned under state and county laws. Scientists and environmental experts argue that seawalls are the primary cause of beach loss throughout the state, and officials expect older ones to become outdated. According to ProPublica, state officials and community members said Obama, who was born and raised in Hawaii, citation needed, right, Robin, <laughs> is expected to be among the property's future occupants. I'm joking. I've seen the long-form birth certificate. I'm satisfied. Uh, Democratic <laughs> strategist Colin Roharo, an advisor for the Renewed Democracy Initiative, former Republican strategist Rena Shah, join us now to discuss um, and so, Colin, uh, at the same time, uh, Obama's trying to bulldoze a giant era, area of Chicago for his presidential library. Uh, he's uh, he, he's do, wreaking who knows what uh, ecosystem havoc in Hawaii. Uh, did, did Obama kind of look at the legacy of, of Jimmy Carter and say, I'm going to do the exact opposite of all of that? <laughs> Uh, good question. Uh, we'd have to ask Jimmy about whether or not he was counseled on this. Um, uh, although I would say, look, the mascot portion of this story, I'm a little tired of. You know, people are wearing masks indoors, outdoors. I think we just need to uh, stop the mascot game. It's a little bit tired, and I'm kind of tired of talking about it. Um, on the bulldozing and or exemptions, I am uh, not a structural engineer. Uh, nor am I a particular expert on construction in either Chicago or Hawaii. Uh, but I would say that, uh, you know, exemptions happen. And uh, the more people you know, the, the more exemptions you might be able to get under a more rapid timeline. Yeah, I, I, I too, I think it's fine if Obama doesn't wear a mask. I guess it would just be if the construction people are required to wear them because of COVID and they don't want to. But Maybe they're just wearing them because they're at a construction site. Sometimes construction people wear masks. I don't know. I, you're right. It does feel like a little bit of a gotcha. And I, I don't know if Obama has actually been heavily associated with like rigid COVID compliance. I don't. He, I, wanted, right? to he have, had a, wanted to have a party. Yeah, I actually right. see him as a victim of rigid COVID <laughs> compliance. He wanted to have a party. Uh, the, poor, the poor guy had to uninvite all of his friends so that he could make sure all the A-list people were able to come right. to his, Did You, his you were invited and then you got your invitation got right, lost yeah. in the mail. Yeah, it's clearly. Which can, can, can we, and, and Reed, I'm curious if you would agree with this, is the worst sign of a person's character, somebody who would disinvite their obscure friends from their birthday party so that random A-listers <laughs> can show up instead? I mean, that's just our culture a these days, isn't it? Like everyone's, yeah. yeah, I mean, everybody's dying for fame. Everybody's dying to go viral. Everybody wants to hang with somebody that's probably two steps ahead of them. So, but even the former president, know. it's like at some point, yeah, let it go, of man. Course. He, nice. of all people, I mean, his presidency was studded with, like, this celebrity, that celebrity. The person that was, like, latest in vogue was always showing up at the White House. I'm not saying that other presidencies were that much different, but, you know, it's not too surprising. And and also, I'm not that surprised by this three-acre beachfront property either. I mean, if that's what being a former U.S. president gets you, like, sign me up. I'm headed out on the campaign trail. Um, must be nice. I just, I just think it's really somewhat hypocritical of the Obamas to let this major project do what it's doing to his legacy, which some of which was staked on environmental sustainability, climate change, fighting that. Um, so the very fact that, that ProPublica did this piece about a year and a half ago, uh, really highlighting the many uh, bits of hypocrisy in this development that the Obamas are, are going to be settling in nicely to. I think everyone should give it a read. Uh, it's kind of really sad because it involves native Hawaiian turtles that had their home right outside the property. Uh, the beach is eroding because they've got this big seawall up that is eroding that beach area right in front of it. So naturally, community members are pretty peeved. And uh, I'm sure Obama uh, is excited for this thing to be done, but probably doesn't like all the uh, backlash he's getting. So let's see what happens. I hope they're able to come to some compromise. But 
there's no doubt here that uh, loopholes were exploited and as Colin put it I over, don't know I but there's it's person. hard to build <laughs> things the government makes it really difficult look I like the sea turtles as much as the next person but I, I, I don't, don't have a true. I, I, no, love, I, I love I love when I like sea turtles I love you like sea turtles as much as anybody on zoning restrictions that's what's, great what's that <laughs> I said I love it when the libertarian weighs in on zoning restrictions yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no, I, I, what I, I would I, say what I'm, I'm not sure is, I, I want to tell Barack Obama where he can and cannot build his giant beachfront mansion. <laughs> well, the good news, though, right, Colin, is that you're from South Florida, right? So the good news, though, is that uh, Hawaii will be underwater in a century, so none of this will matter. Whereas, well, a century, nothing right. will matter to me. I'll be dead. I, say, but I would say if they're looking for inconsistency in Barack Obama's post-candidacy or candidacy, and the best they got is a seawall argument and a mask off at a construction site. Yeah got to work a little hard. I know. I sound like an Obama shill here. I don't care that he had a party. I don't care that he's not masked. And I don't care that he's trying to build a luxury mansion in Hawaii. Wow. You are about his $60 million social influencer profession? That's kind of... Yeah. It's kind of what? I don't know. It's degrading, isn't it? To uh, the office? I mean, I guess the office is kind of functionally and completely degraded. Compared to what Trump's doing. At this point. Yeah. Can't degrade it much further. I, I, I don't know. Find another president that can sing Al Green, and then we can make an argument about his his influencer, uh, his influencer post-candidacy, post-presidency uh, career. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Well, <laughs> Rena, Colin, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, guys. We'll be back with more Rising right after this.